All right, guys. Hi, how are you? Welcome to hopefully the last video of this week. Um, today, oh, let me get rid of the actual thing. Today, we are going to talk about, or in this video, we're going to talk about um, kind of some of the best ways to use Google as a research tool. Uh, Google can find you so much information that unless you unless you can use it properly, properly is not the right word, unless you can figure out how to get it to give you what you want, you can get lost in a sea of information that has nothing to do with what you're looking for, okay? Um, and so there's some quick tips here. You can always Google, <laughs> that's funny, Google the, a phrase like tips for using Google or top, top Google search things, you know, don't Google that because that'll be horrible. But um, these are just some things I know and use pretty regularly um, that you can use. I want to show some of them to you today. So I don't know if you guys know about quotation marks in Google, but if you use quotation marks when you're searching for your phrase, it is going to only search for those words in that particular order. Whereas if you just type the phrase in without quotation marks, it's going to look for those words anywhere in the document or the page. Okay, and so I've done that here and I'll put it side by side and I'll show you. Uh, remember my prompt. It's one of these, is it this one? Jury selection, racial, no, it's not that one. Um, it's right here. Jury selection. There we go. Maybe. Nope. Oh, I have too many tabs open. Okay, I don't want. Let's just. Like that. Yes. Okay. Too many. Too many. Too many. Too many. He can it. He can it. He can it. He can it. There we go. When? So that's a line from. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He can it, he can it, he can it, he can it. And for all of my young adult and high school days, I thought the guy was saying, Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. But he's saying, he can't hit, he can't hit, he can't hit. Watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Maybe you'll get it. And watch it just because it's awesome. Anyways, okay. Racial discrimination in jury selection with quotation marks. Racial discrimination in jury selection without quotation marks. Okay, and I just want to show you that some of the top stuff is exactly the same. Hey, are you looking for scholarly articles? Just a heads up right now, unless you're going to work ahead and find stuff for the next few weeks, don't dive into Google Scholar. Do not dive into Google Scholar because I'm going to ask you for Google Scholar stuff next week for stuff you find using Google Scholar. So you'll have stuff for this week and then you'll have to find even more Google Scholar stuff next week. So don't, don't go into Google Scholar this week. Next week, go into Google Scholar. And then you'll see Wikipedia is at the very top and then let's see what they got. So after Wikipedia, after their little featured snippets, EJI is the first thing that comes up, which you should totally click on um, because it may show up in the search for whatever your topic is because EJI is the foundation that um, Brian Stevenson started and um, that he talks about all through. Okay. EJI is the uh, organization that Brian Stevenson started and that he talks about all throughout the book. So if EJ, if you are looking up something and EJI pops up, well, it's going to be either a great source of information itself or it's going to have links to other information. EJI is the, the same for both of these. Uh, the next one, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling from 2019 is the same. All right. And then, look, we start to get different results. So you can see here... Eliminate racial discrimination, excuse me, racial discrimination in jury selection, racial discrimination in jury selection, racial discrimination in jury selection. All right, and then when you come down to the third one, well, on the one with quotation marks, it's still going to say racial discrimination in jury selection, racial discrimination in jury selection. 
racial discrimination in jury selection. When we get here, because it's not, because it's looking for these words in any order instead of this specific order, well, we're going to start getting different results. So the third one here is from the NACLDL, which I don't know what that is. And here is MacArthurJustice.org. So simply, oh, look, NACDL pops up there. Yeah. And then they have SCOTUS blog and we have and then they have ACS Law, and we have New York Times, okay? Um, we're not going to go ahead and... <sighs> I don't want to necessarily put um, any of this into our annotated bibliography yet, because I just want to show you how to find stuff, okay? Ooh, thank you. Um, so then, next... This is my fault. I'm sorry for having so much stuff open. Um, we did the first thing, which was quotation marks. And the reason, guys, I'm looking up uh, words and phrases related to racism and jury selection is because if you remember, when I developed my research question, um, it's on what is the history of racist laws concerning jury selection in America and what effects have those laws had on communities of colors and what can be done to get the laws off the books, right? Yours might be something to do with mass incarceration or mentally ill people in prisons or the death penalty. So your search terms are maybe different. Um, the other thing that is not on this little tip list, which maybe I'll put right here, is... Um, uh, I guess I'll put it right here. So just wait, play with your phrasing. Um, and I'll explain that right now. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to say one thing. Um, so if I'm looking for information on, oops, that's not even your guys's, that's my 10th graders. Um, if I'm looking for information on racist jury selection laws, I might not get what I want with just one Google search of the first phrase that comes into my mind. And so the biggest, biggest thing that I can say to you is try to say it different ways. Do a Google search term of racist jury selection laws, of racial bias on juries, of laws about race and juries, right? A million different ways to say the one thing. Play with your Google search term until you start getting the results you want, okay? Um, don't just think there's only one way to say it, right? This is English class. There's a thousand ways to say your search term. Play with that phrasing, okay? Um, the other one is the minus sign. The minus sign will exclude words, right? So say, I don't want... <laughs> Say I'm in Canada and I'm doing this research problem. None of you are in Canada. Some of you are in Mexico, though. Say, um, you know, if you do a Google search term and you have your your location on, it's going to ping it down to your location and give you results based on your location. So, you know, but, but, but what I really want to focus on is that you can use the minus sign to exclude words. So if we go back to our our stuff that's open with search terms. Um, I could do something like, um, uh, race. I'm going to play with my phrase as well. Um, jury selection laws and race. And then let's think of something we don't want in there. Um, I don't want uh, I don't want the word confederate for some reason. I'm gonna spell confederate wrong. Confederate. Right. So let's look at this up. Let's see if we get different results. We might not. Because I picked a kind of random term, but, uh, okay. So, 
we're getting some of the same results as before. EJI, U.S. Supreme Court, and persistence of discrimination in jury selection. So it looks like we're getting the same results here because no one's saying Confederate. Um, I, I want to keep this because I liked that we got that new thing. And um, let's try to think of a better phrase with a minus. So let's do um, <sighs> jury selection race. Let's have it not say black because I just want to showcase um, that you can get different results okay um, okay let's see US Supreme Court okay there we go there we go All right, so this is jury selection, race, and not black. The word black is not in any of these. Jury selection, race, the word black could be in some of these. And you can see right from the, the very first thing we got is different. This is that Supreme Court thing that's been popping up. This is why, is why race is hard to erase from jury selection. That sounds really interesting. It's a CNN news result, though. We have race and jury selection, psychological perspectives, right? Um, how race affects jury selection. So we totally have different ones. Um, I'm going to pop. Oh, no, I don't know what's happening anymore. Okay, so the one other thing I want you to notice at this point is that I am not closing any of these tabs. You can tell that I'm a tab queen. I keep lots and lots of tabs open. It's horrible. Um, but we're going to go through this in a minute and pick some to look at, okay? Um, so when it comes to your phrasing, as you've seen before, play with your phrasing. Say it differently a million different ways to get some good search results. The top search results used to be the best. Now the top search results tend to be paid for. So you want to scroll down generally past the Wikipedia entry, double check and see if they're sponsored results, okay? You don't want sponsored stuff. Um, play with your phrasing. This, this uh, document is available to you. You can see how um, see, keeping it simple and keeping it using the words websites would use is helpful. So searching for something like current constitutional jury selection laws instead of what are the racist jury selection laws and what are the fa what are the fairy fairy I don't know what fairy was supposed to mean jury selection ones or jury selection and racism legacy not what are the lasting effects of racism jury selection laws right you want to be simple and you want to use phrases like the websites would use not words like you would use so why do I keep getting picked for jury selection is a much harder thing for Google to figure out than why are people of color not picked to go to juries or not picked for jury selection, right? Um, the last thing I want to show you, and we're going to use a phrase we did, is that you can search for file types, particularly what I like are PDF files. So you're, you put your search term in and then you click file type colon PDF. And this is going to give you only PDF documents as a result. So let's go back to our other thing. And let's pick, uh, let's pick this one in quotation marks. So I'm going to copy it because I want to keep those results. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type the exact same thing in. Stop it. But I'm going to do a file type colon PDF. No spaces at all. Okay. File type colon PDF. Let's see if it gets us anything. Boom. Okay. So this is getting us only PDF documents to look at. So it's the exact same search term and it's a whole different list of possible sources that come in PDF format. Um, so, ooh, the impact of jury race in criminal trials looks really good. So let's click on that. 
And then I, I am going to end this because my family's having dinner. So the last video will be uh, later on. And it will be me taking one of these things that we found and putting it into our annotated bibliography. So this is a 39-page document, which makes me scream and holler. It's got freaking... I mean, it's, look, it's got charts and appendices. It's amazing. Uh, I didn't see a date flipping through. It's from 2020. Oh, my God, I just want to cry. It's recent. Okay. Um, and so this is what I mean by PDF document, right? It is not a web page, per se, with a bunch of clickable stuff. It's something that existed and was put in a PDF document and put online. So I'm going to stop here, okay? The big gist of this video is put a bunch of stuff into Google. Say the same thing a million different ways. Uh, always open a new tab or, or save a bookmark before you do another search, okay? So for me, this is how I roll. I open up a bunch of tabs. I have a bunch of differently worded things. And then as you'll see in my next video, I'll start clicking open things. If I like it, I'll save it. And then I'll put it in my works cited annotated bibliography page. Okay. So if I can impart two things on you, it is to use a lot of different Google search terms to try to find interesting stuff. And keep it all open or save it in some way so that you don't have to try to remember what you searched in order to find what you already had. So um, you can bookmark a, a, a page with a search term. That's cool. It'll, it, it'll pop right back up with that exact same search term. You can put it in a document, however you want to do it, but make sure that you once you have some pages of stuff that might be actually relevant to you, um, you don't want to lose it. So however you organize your work, figure out how to keep it in a place that you can come back to. Okay. I will see you in just a few minutes on the other side of dinner and we will turn two of these into an annotated bibliography. And then you'll have to do three more on your own, actually five, because you have to do your own stuff for your own topic and we'll be done for the week. Okay. Uh, I love you guys. I miss you guys. You guys are so much cooler than my kids. Bye.